live from Professor Fudge's quarantine basement. It's 256 Chat with your host, Michael Fudge. Hello, everybody, and welcome to IST 256 Chat. I'm your host, Michael Fudge, and this week is week 12, and we will just be discussing data analysis with pandas. And I have with me a special guest, Data Science Dave. Dave, I love the L. Roker glasses, but what gives? I'm getting ready to commune with nature, dude. Pandas has made me so productive that I only have to work like 10 hours a week. And I'm going to spend the rest of my time going hiking with my dog here and also like rubbing like CBD oil on my temples. It is so relaxing, Michael. So relaxing. Uh, sure. <laughs> Dave, can you tell me a bit about pandas? Groovy, Michael. Pandas is a Python library that you can use to manipulate tabular data. It makes it super easy to import that data in a variety of formats, manipulate that data, and then export it into any kind of format you want. You know, it's not called pandas because it's named after the furry critter. You know, that's not true, man. It's called pandas because it stands for panel data, which is kind of the stuff you're working with. Very insightful, Dave. It's like double rainbow groovy. It's going to blow your mind. It's so amazing. You're going to be super productive when you use it. It's incredibly easier than doing for loops over your data and things like that. You just won't have to do any of that stuff. I'm going to need to stop you there, Dave. Let's get on with the lesson. Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's Lesson 12, Data Analysis with Pandas. Pandas is a Python library that lets you easily manipulate data as a table. As you'll see, it makes it very simple to load data from a lot of different sources and then also use that data in a variety of ways. So the reading for this week comes from um, uh, something that I wrote. So it's right here. There's nothing from the Zy books again. And of course, if you want to ask questions about the, this lecture, you can do so during the normal class time. Here's the um, link down here. There's no participation this week. All right, so let's just talk about pandas and then what is data analysis. Then we'll get right into a lot of examples this week. So we start out as we always do with a connect activity. You might want to pause the video before I release the answer. The process of systematically applying techniques to evaluate data is known as munging, data analysis, data science, or databases. Pause the video and take a, a minute to answer the question. The answer, of course, here, as the connect activity is usually a softball, is data analysis. Data munging is another technique. And uh, basically what you're doing in data munging is you are cleaning up data. And uh, data science is a discipline, and databases probably don't need a definition for you. So data analysis, what is it? It's applying logical techniques to describe, condense, recap, and evaluate data to illustrate information. And the goals of data analysis are discover useful information, provide insights, suggest conclusions, and support decision making. So I want to just take a minute and explain to you that this lecture is about data analysis, but it's also about just pandas and the utility that pandas brings to your Python programming. So we will talk about both of those things. But what better way to learn about pandas than to really explain mostly what people use pandas for. So pandas is a Python uh, package for data analysis. It's short for panel data, even though pandas are this cute cuddly bear that's not why it's called pandas. Uh, it's, it has built-in data structures which simplify the manipulation and analysis of data sets. And it's easy to use but very powerful. And it's, it's very easy for you to all of a sudden realize you're doing something but not know why you're doing it. So that's why I joke around 
and say, with all that power comes the responsibility that you understand what it's doing underneath the hood. Just don't um, interpret what you're doing as magic. Know what it's doing. So we can't teach everything about pandas, but we will focus on the basics, enough to get you started so that you can figure out the rest on your own. And then here's the official pandas docs down here. So let's talk about two really essential concepts in pandas. This is really going to help you understand it a lot better. So basically, a pandas, ha a pandas has a series, which is a list which has been named. So in this case, it's a dictionary, and then the dictionary key is grades, and then the values is a, a list of grades. And then a data frame is nothing more than a dictionary of these series. So I have a dictionary here. And then in here, I have one panda series, which has names as the key, and the value are all the names in a list. And then it has grades as a key, and then the values are all the grades in the list. And so with this setup, if you look through the list and you say the second person in the list is Ken, then Ken's grade is a 90. See, it's a corresponding offset in the list. Uh, names bracket one is Ken, so grades bracket one is Ken's grade of 90. That's basically the idea behind pandas. And of course, we will get to a watch me code. So I'm going to do a lot of things in this watch me code here. I'm going to uh, take you through how to build a very simple data frame from scratch. I'll also uh, show you how you can manipulate the data frame and then get at various pieces of it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so here I am out at my demo page and let's first of all let's import pandas now most of the time when you import pandas you do not import it this way because when you import pandas like this and then you want to make a series you say something like this and let's make a series and then let's have uh, apple banana cherry and orange these are the values and the name of this series is going to be fruit okay and then let's just take a look at what we did oh I called it fruits didn't I okay and there you go it says panda series most of the time we do not import pandas this way we import it like this because we don't want to keep typing the word pandas and pandas and pandas and pandas over and over and over again. So a convention is that we import it and then rename it as PD so that we can just do this PD.series. That's basically how it's done. That's the convention you'll see in all the examples. Let me run that, define it, and now it's there. Okay. So you can see in this series what you get back is this, is this list. And then it tells you the name of the list. And then the data type is object. So if, if there's strings, it's considered an object type. All right, let's make another series here um, that is for the quantities of the fruits. We can do something like this. We could say PD series. And then I'm just going to put in some numbers here. Five, seven, two, nine. Uh, it's capital S for series. There we go. Okay, and then this is type int. And it has um, int64. Remember, pandas is used for dealing with big data, so we want a 64-bit integer, which is a really large number, uh, as opposed to just a regular um, integer, which is uh, for you know um, numbers up to about 2 billion with a regular integer. So these are really big numbers. Now let's build a data frame out of it. Let's say uh, inventory is PD data frame and we can say that we're going to have one column called fruit and then for that column we're going to use our fruits and just to show you different ways you can do this we'll have one column for fruits we'll have another column for quantity and for that one we're just going to use quantities and then for our third column price we're going to actually make that column right here. Uh, let's say it's a it's two ninety nine for the apple, one ninety nine for the.
for the banana, $3.99 for the expensive cherries, and $2.99 for the orange. All right, and I always screw something up, put a colon there. Remember, these are dictionaries. Key, colon, value. And then let's put just like echo the inventory. When we do that, you get back this nice looking table. So what Pandas is doing here is it's basically building this table from these series. So you have these series. So this is uh, looks a lot like a Python object, and it is. And so if you if you think about this, this could be JSON data that you had that you load in and then put into a data frame. And this would this would be um, totally acceptable. Later on, we'll give you examples of how to load data into the data frame so that you're not manually building the data frame like this. Okay, but this is just a good way to start. So now that you've got this data frame structure, what can you do with it? Normally, you'd have to do like a, a for loop to find, you know, for example, any fruit that has a quantity over two. You can look at this and say, well, I know the apple's over two and the banana's over two and the orange is over two, but you'd have to write some kind of Python program to do that. Well, you're going to see that Pandas makes this really simple and easy to do. So let's just show you a couple of things that you can do with the indexers uh, in Pandas to start. So first thing I'm going to show you is it is really just a, a list, a series of lists. So I can do this. I can say inventory. Uh, I loc, and then I can give it two sets of lists. Like I can say, give me the first row as a slice, and then give me everything in the second row. And see, now I got the very first row. Maybe I want cherry, so that's the third row, zero, one, two, right? This is great practice. Whoop, that's banana. Starts at two, right? And, and great practice for the next next test because the next test you're going to be asked to do some slices and things like that. Uh, that's a good example of it. Now, maybe I just want to grab the fruit name and the quantity. So the fruit name is in zero, position zero, column zero, and the quantity is in column one, but I want to include it, so I got to go to two. So there, now I got that. So you can take the data in the data frame and slice it up any way you want. If you just want to slice the rows, you could do it like this. And then that just gives you a row. Okay. Now, you notice how I'm just echoing the data frame to the console, right? What I can't do is do this in two. I can't do something like this. Um, for i in range. How many things are in my data frame? Four, right? Four. And then if I say print inventory i loc i i plus one to slice this thing see it prints kind of funny right see it repeats quantity and price and it, it doesn't look fancy like this that's because when you do it this way it's calling ipython display so if i want to do something like this i have to say you know from ipython dot display import display and then rather calling rather than calling print i call display You've seen me do this before. And so now I get each copy of the data frame the way I want it, right? So display is nice. That's what happens when you just echo something to the IPython console is it actually implicitly calls display, but you can only call display once per cell. So if I want to call display four times, like I did in this case, I need to include this display function from here. That's just something to show you. So what I did here was I looped over this data frame and then for each time, I just printed each individual row, 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 right? Just to show you that you can do that. Now, let me show you some other things that you can do with the, the data frame. You can also slice it more conveniently by column. For example, I could say inventory, and then just give me the fruit. And what this is gonna give you back is a series, right? A pandas series. Okay, well, maybe you wanna see that series as a data frame. So instead of seeing this whole table, I just want to see this fruit as a table. 
what you do in this case is you ask for a list of values back. So rather than um, sending in a value, I send in a list of values. And then in turn, what I get back is the data frame. Now, you might be wondering, what is this 0, 1, 2, 3? That's, a, that's called the index. Okay, it's kind of like a, a way to identify each of the rows in the data frame. This is this thing here is called the index. It's actually the third piece of a data frame. Is you've got your rows, your your columns in in your series, and then your data frame is the whole thing. And then a data frame has uh, an index, and so does a series. See that? And the reason that that um, by the way, banana uh, matches quantity is because of the fact that they share the same index, right? So let me once again show you this. So banana is 2, 0, 1, and quantity 0, 1, and price 0, 1. So they share the same index 1. So that's why banana, quantity, price, they all share that same index 1, and that's why they line up in the same place in the table. There's no magic to it. That's basically how it works. So if you're familiar with a spreadsheet, you're already familiar with this concept in, the, in a spreadsheet you've got row numbers and column a b c d same idea here except you're labeling the column here and then the data if you ask the spreadsheet to put something in row three and column two you know it's going to put it right here in in pandas because that's the index and then that's the name of the column the only difference in pandas is that we have actual column names rather than having you know letters a b c d for our columns Okay, let's get back onto the lesson. That's me pulling one column. What if I want to pull more than one column? Well, I just add them to the list. So inventory, let's grab the quantity first, and then let's grab the fruit. Uh, and I need these to be a list, so I need to access them like this. There we go. So quantity, fruit. Now, uh, just a couple things. What if I did this uh, incorrectly? Like, uh, I'm going to copy this. And let's just put, you know, fruit. You know, I get a key error. So you got to think about this. Why am I getting a key error? Well, you're getting a key error because remember, by definition, pandas is a dictionary which has keys and values. And the keys are the column names and the values are the list of values. So I get a key error here because this is not one of, of the keys. So that brings up an interesting point. How do you get a list of the columns? Well, if you type inventory columns, you're going to get a, a an index, and it has all the different column names as a list. So that is a way that you can determine what the columns are. Also, likewise, uh, you can do a dir on this and find out what else you can do to it. You can see that you have um, fruit, price and quantity in here. That's interesting. So what does that mean? Fruit, price, and quantity. What if I do inventory fruit? I get back the same series as if I did this. So there's, there's two ways to do it in pandas. You could do it like this, or you can do it like this. So I wonder if this works. I don't know. Let's try it out. See if it works. I got to use my double brackets, right? Maybe it works. Maybe it won't work. Okay, that does not work because this does not represent the name of the series. This is the entire series itself. It's different. Okay. What I would want to do in this case is something like this. I'd want to say PD data frame. And then I want to build a data frame out of both of these things. Okay, but why would I build a data frame out of this? I already have a data frame, right? This would this would not be the right thing to do, but that's what I would be doing instead. So I'm going to leave that and take that out. All right, so that's how you um, pull out a column of data. Let's talk about pulling out rows of data. So let's take a look at my table again. Let's suppose I just want to pull out um, anything more than $3. 
Okay, any, any, no, let's say, yeah, $3 is fine. So any of these um, fruits that are more than $3. So more than $3 would be price, right? Inventory price bigger than three, right? When I do this, what I get back is a series of trues and falses. So it applies this expression to each row in the data frame and saying, are you more than $3? False. Are you more than $3? False. Are you more than $3? True. Are you more than $3? False. With this, we can then apply this to our data frame like this. I can say inventory and now apply uh, in price bigger than three. And what I'll get back is just the rows that match that. So that's pretty cool. So to show you that that works, let's do one with quantity. Let's say inventory, and then we want the inventory quantity um, less than six. Okay, so these two have a quantity less than six. So the next thing you should ask yourself is, can I combine these two techniques together? And the answer, of course, is yes, you may do this. So you can say, I can say inventory, quantity, less than six. And then in here, I can also include a column index of fruit and name. Well, let's do quantity. like that. So I slice the rows and I slice the columns as well. I can do both. All this slicing up of rows and columns might um, might get a little confusing. So I want to show you some things. You can assign these manipulations to variables. Let me demonstrate. So I can say uh, large quantity And we can set that to the data frame that has an inventory quantity larger than six. When I do that, you might say, well, what's the type of large quantity? What I get back uh, is a data frame, pandas core frame data frame. So it's a data frame. So let's do this. Let's display it. There it is. All right. I can take this and I can slice that if I want and do other things to it. Or I can further manipulate it. Like I can say large quantity row fruit only is large quantity fruit. And then let's just take a look at that. There you go. So, so you can you can put these steps in variables if you want. <laughs> and then use those variables uh, to solve some kind of problem. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter if I do the column indexes or the row indexes first. Like for example, I could say inventory fruit price, and then I can say on top of that inventory price bigger than three. There you go. So I can add them together. And, and this time I didn't use this inv dot bigger, I used the actual column index. Either one works because they both return a series. And that's the important thing to understand about pandas is what does this do? This gives you back a series. What does this do? This gives you back a series. They're the same thing. Okay. Once you know that, you're well on your way to understanding how pandas works. So one question you might have is, you know, how do I, you know, edit 
the data frame. And we'll get to that in, a, in another session. So let's just focus on you have a data frame, you want to read it, you want to manipulate it, right? So let's leave with a last thing is sometimes you have no choice but to for loop over the data frame. So how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy to do. You just say for row in inventory. And then there's a function. Let me, I guess I should do this first, dir inv. There's a bunch of functions in here that you can use. You see a lot of internal functions, but there's a, um, some functions here called um, abs, add, all, any, at, you know, there's a lot of different statistical functions in here. Drop, drop an A, fill, fill an A, um, get. There's, if you go down far enough, there's there's a lot. So you might be wondering, you want to learn about these things. Again, go to the Pandas docs, or you could just type in help, inventory to records. And then just read about it. Okay? And that will tell you what it's doing. you got to get good at reading the docs, because... I'm not going to be here to teach you everything all the time. And the only way you can really pick this stuff up on your own is to learn how to read the docs. It's uncomfortable at first, but you will get better at it. Trust me. And this is the golden ticket to being good at Python is learning to read those docs. So I'm going to use two records. So for row in inventory, two records. What two records does... is it takes that data frame here, takes that data frame and converts it into a dictionary, a list of dictionary. I guess the easiest way to show you that is to just show you what in two records looks like. See, so in M2 records is a list um, of, these are not dictionaries technically, they're tuples. And a tuple is a, the best way to think about it is it's a read-only dictionary. It's a read-only dictionary. When I use this, I could say for row, I guess I'll leave this here for history's sake, and say for row in inventory to records. And I could have called it fruit if I wanted to, because that's what we got here. And now I can say print row, let me do an F string. Row name, oh, it's, it's fruit, right? There, so I print each of the fruits. Now maybe I want to put the prices down too. Let's do a dollar sign and then row price. There you go. That's how you for loop over a data frame. It's very useful when you need to get at each individual row or you need to do a, a complex manipulation that you cannot figure out how to do uh, in pandas declaratively. Okay, let's continue on with the lecture. Time for a little check yourself. If I do this, DF quarter, what do I get back? A series or a data frame? What do you think I get back? I'll pause for a second. In this case, you're getting back a series because, whoops, I always do that because I only asked for a value. I didn't ask for a list of values. If I ask for a list of values, you're gonna get back a data frame. Like for example, in this one, well, this is a Boolean index question. So which rows are included in this Boolean index? If I said sold less than 110, which of the rows are included here by index? Is this one included? Sold less than 110. So the first one is included. That rules out B because 100 is less than 110. Uh, 120 is not, and 150 is not. So it should just be 0 and 2, which is C. The answer would be C here in this case. 
So you can already see what the next exam is going to uh, bode for you. You're going to be given a couple of data frames, and you're going to be asked how to deal with um, slicing up that data frame, either by Boolean index or by columns. All right. So let's do the next example. This example, we're going to get a little more realistic. We're going to say, let's load a, a data set, and then let's learn how to how to use pandas, the what pandas can do to deal with you know, bigger data sets, if you will, not not data sets that you're making up along the way. So we'll also explore what's in the data set. Um, we'll also deal with the fact that it has no column names. And then uh, we'll also talk about um, getting rid of empty and empty values in the data frame. Okay, out there on the internet, there is this data set of superhero movies. And uh, this superhero movie data, data set uh, has all the movies from 1978 to 2012, all the superhero movies. And it has the year of the movie, the title of the movie, uh, which comic books it is, DC or Marvel. And then the ratings. This is the IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, composite rating out of 100. Then it has the opening weekend box office. It has the average ticket price. So in, in 1978, it cost $2.34 to go to the movies. Yeah, get off my lawn. And then we have the weekend attendance and the U.S. population that year. Now, how do I know what these columns are all about? It, well, if you just go to the data sets um, page here, it explains that. Okay, this is my own uh, GitHub repository of useful data sets that I use in all my classes. So the real thing is I want to read this data set in. Now, normally, if you were going to do this, you know, up till now in this class, you would have to download this file, then go over here to Jupyter and upload the file, and then you could do with open or something like that. But you're going to see that Pandas eliminates all of that nonsense, and this is what makes Pandas so awesome is it has requests built into it. So it can do an HTTP get and get this file for us on the internet. So I'm gonna take this link here and I'm just gonna copy it. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm just gonna put in a data, data file and I'm just gonna do this, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is say SH for superhero is PD now, there's lots of functions in pandas. I guess maybe what I should do is open up another cell and do dir pd to show you what functions are available in pandas. There's a lot of them in here. What we're looking at is there's a bunch of reads. Read clipboard, read CSV, read Excel, read feather, read JSON. So there's all sorts of tools you can use to read your data in pandas so that you don't have to go through and try to figure out how to load it manually with file processing like we did, and then serialize it, um, and then deserialize it, I should say, like we did. So a lot of the things you already learned, you aren't gonna have to do in Pandas, because Pandas does it for you. This is what one of the reasons why it makes it so awesome. So there's a read CSV here, read CSV, and I'm just gonna go for it and put in my data file. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, like, let's display the superhero data set there we go it read it off the internet and then it loaded it into pandas how awesome is that pretty cool now one of the things i don't like about this data set is it does not have a row of column names so what pandas did was it took the very first row in the data set and it made it column headers this is not what we want so we need to actually override the way that this works so that it doesn't do that. So if we go down here and do help, PD read CSV, we can read the help and find out how to do it. So it says file path, that's what we gave it. All right, let's look for header. Oh, see there's header. It says infer. What are my other options here? Let's go find header. It says header int list of int or infer row numbers to use as column names or you can give it a list of column names 
Okay, list of column names right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give it a list of column names up here for my header. I don't want it to infer the header and then just grab the first row. That's not what I want. So I need to add um, some columns and um, it's a named argument. So you go back down there, it says header equals. So you know, it's a named argument. See, this is not a named argument because it doesn't have the something equals, right? So I'm gonna go up here and say header equals columns. Now I have to define columns. And I'm going to pause the video and do that so you don't watch me type a whole bunch of columns in. All right, in the magic of editing, I have them in there. Year, title, comic, IMDb, Rotten Tomato score, composite score, opening weekend box office, average ticket price, etc., etc., etc. I run it. And now I, whoops, I get an error. I goof something up. Header must be integer or list of integers. Whoops, okay, so I used the wrong argument there. I thought I had it right. Let me just see. Header infer, what's names, names? Let's see what names is. List of column names to use. If file contains no header row, then you should explicitly pass header none. Ah, so it's header none, then names. Okay, so I was kind of close. But again, you got to read the docs. Header none, names, columns. Let's try that. Oh, that's much better. Okay, so now I have my column names up there. See that? And I didn't lose my first row, which has Superman in there. So boom, there you go. Now you've got a data set that you've made out of this CSV file. And literally, it was like, you know, honestly, it's one line of code that does it. And this is what Pandas makes Pandas so awesome, is that uh, it can do this quickly, and easily. So now that you've got this data in this data set, you might be wondering, well, what is your task, right? So, you know, in your project, you might want to read in a data set of movies and then let the, the, let the user pick a movie. And then after they pick a movie, you might go query an API that tells them where they can go see the movie in a movie theater. Although I don't think there's any movie theaters open right now. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we wanna find out um, which movies are, are what, what comic book is more popular in this time set? Is it DC or is it Marvel? That's the question that we're trying to answer. And we're gonna try to answer it in, in code using the data that we have. Okay, so let's do a couple things. So I can do SH comic, and that gives me back a series of all the comics, right? So what I might want to do is just say, well, how many are DC, how many are Marvel, right? If you get a dir on this, you know, what can I do? If I say dir sh comic, you'll see that you have um, some functions in here. If you go down far enough, there's some functions in here. And one of the um, functions in here is called value counts. Value counts. So check this out. Okay, there's 29 Marvel and 20 DC um, movies in this data set. So maybe you want to get this as a percentage. Well, you could do that yourself, right? By taking this, like there's 49. So I could take this and divide it by 49 and get a, and get a ratio. But there's a way to do this with the value counts function itself, right? If you ask for help on this, if I say, hey, give me some help on that, you'll see that you can pass in a named argument Oh, this is giving you help on the series, not on, on value counts. So let's do series. Why didn't that work? Huh. See, it's giving me help on series, but not on value counts. 
All right, well, that's failing me. So let me let me show you um, how to use help to get that. Let's go up here. Pandas series value counts. Okay, this is the official docs. So value counts has an argument called normalize false. And it's defaulting to false. So when you normalize it, if true, the object is returned will contain re relative frequencies. All right, so let's check that out. That's what we wanted. SH value comic value counts normalize true little n mike so there now you get them as a as a percentage 59 percent to almost 41 percent marvel to dc so that's basically value counts so let's see how this data might be skewed because if you have been following comic book movies there's been a lot of marvel movies lately so compared to DC movies. So let's do something like this. Uh, let's say um, superhero, and then let's say the superhero year, year is less than 2002. Then give me the comic value counts. So uh, 12 DC for Marvel before 2002. Let's see what it looks like after 2002. <laughs> 25 Marvel, 8 DC. So this data set is heavily skewed towards earlier movies were DC and later movies are Marvel. It's good to know these things. And, you know, you can sit there and explore it like this and look at them and then say, yeah, it looks that way. But then how can you really be sure it is that way? Uh, the only way to really do that is to sort of poke around in your data. What, what you'll do this week in the lab is exactly that, by the way. So let's continue on with our, with our storytelling. A couple of things, like, you know, this is a lot of data in here. Imagine if you had, like, you know, 4 million movies. How do you deal with that? You don't want to just dump the entire 4 million movies out there. So here's a couple of tips for you. You can get a sample that gives you one at random. See that? If you want more than one at random, you can put in a number here. Give me 10 at random. There's a sample of 10. There's a sample of five. Every time you run it, you get a different sample. It's kind of cool. And then this is the index over here. So 20, this is the 28th movie. This is the third movie, so you can see each of the movies and uh, their indexes. So that's the one. You can also get the, the first five by doing this. Head. You know, here's the first five. Head five. Here's the last five. Tail. But you can put in, like, maybe the last seven. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> so there you go. Get the first and the last. Now, let's start to dive in and do some analysis. If I, if I look at these data, if I look at this data set, you'll see that one thing you might want to use to determine popularity is how many people, how much did the movie make, right? So, but the problem with box office is it's dependent on the ticket price, right? So, you know, there's... 746 7.4 million dollars but that's in ticket prices where there are two dollars and 34 cents versus you know this looks like 128 million dollars but the ticket price was 789 it's like you can't compare that because you're comparing you know apples to oranges if you will so an another thing to think about is how many people went doesn't matter like if 10 people went to the movie, but there's only a hundred people, that's 10% of the people that went to the movie. But if 50 people went to the movie and there's now a thousand people that could go, that's less than 1% of the 
of the people that went. So one of the analyses we're going to look at to see if the movie's popular is we're going to take a look at how many people went on the opening weekend, and we're going to normalize that against the population for that year. So if there was, you know, this will give us a percentage, and then based on that percentage, we can really determine which movies are the most popular. Because you can't really base it just on this open weekend attendance because um, the population of the country was different back in 1978 as opposed to in 2012. Okay. So I can't divide um, these two rows because there's no number here. You know, it loads the data and there was no number for this movie Swamp Thing or The Punisher. So those are immediately out of contention. If you don't have data in the data set, um, you, you can't use it to do the analysis. So there, you might be wondering, how are, is there a way that I can remove these rows from contention? And there is, and this is pretty common. So if I do an sh drop na, it's a function on a data frame, it will get rid of all of the cells that do not have any data in them. So up here, I got rid of the Punisher and Swamp Thing, and because I can't do the math on them because they don't, there's no attendance numbers, so they're, they're not applicable. So you can see it got rid of them, because that's useful. So because it's so useful and I'm going to need it, I'm going to actually store it in another variable. I'm going to call this one Superhero Two, and then let's just a Superhero Two, okay? Or you could call it Superhero Dropped or something like that, right? But uh, Superhero Two is fine. All right. Now we need to make our own column that divides these two columns here. Let's do this. Superhero 2 head 5. So I need to divide these two columns. Right? And I can do that like this. I can make my own column like this. SH2. And then I'm going to call this um, percent of pop and then that's going to be a new column and for example I could set that to zero I'm just going to do this just to show you what happens here okay and now I have a new column and it's all zeros now why am I getting this uh, error <laughs> I'm getting this uh, error because um, I have filtered the data frame and then I'm adding a column to a filter. So it's sort of warning me about that. And in this particular case, it's gonna be fine, but there's a few cases where it wouldn't be um, acceptable to do this, which we'll get into a little later on. How do I deal with this? Well, one way that you can sort of fix this is you can turn the warnings off away to with pandas. I'm gonna put this at the top you can turn the warnings off uh, like this. Okay, I'm turning off the filter warnings. I want to ignore them. So then I'm going to go down here. I don't see the, uh, the filter warning. There. Okay. So that's not very useful because I set it to zero, but it does show you that you can make a column and put a value in there to start, right? I can also use this as a slice, by the way. I could say um, superhero percentage of population where superhero to comic is equal to DC. Let's make the DC ones a one. Oh, it's two equals Mike. And it's not capital comic, it's little comic. Okay. So, so now the DC ones are one and the Marvel ones are still zero. See that? That's basically feature engineering. So you can use this, these filters if you want to only apply that manipulation to a subset of columns. All right. Or you could also uh, loop over it. But let me go back and put it the way it was because I don't want to do this. Okay. As a matter of fact, I don't want percentage of population to be zero. What I want it to be is take that... Take that opening weekend attendance. And divide that by the US 
population that year. I can do them this way, or I can do it this way. It doesn't really matter. It's your preference as to how you want to represent that series. Okay, And then there you go. Now you have a ratio that represents percentage of population. And this will tell you which, which um, movies are, are more popular because now it's been normalized. Uh, by the U.S. population, how many people actually got uh, of the what percentage of the country actually went to the movie? So now you might want to see what the top five of these are, right? But it's not sorted. Uh, whoops, I got my keyboard shortcuts on there. Well, there we go. It's not sorted that way. It's still sorted uh, by year. So I can say uh, sort values and let's sort by percentage of pop I'll pay attention to this column over here okay now there you go steel um, did not do well and then uh, now I can just ask for the head this will give me the least popular get the least popular five okay and let's get the most popular five let's ask for the tail so these are are the most popular five now I could also get the the most popular five but I want um, to sort them by this right I want to sort them by percentage of population so that you know Avengers appears at the top because it's obviously the most popular. So I'd have to sort values, but I'd have to sort values in um, in descending order. So let's do this because I forgot how to do it. It's a named argument, and I never remember what it is. I'm going to say help that, and I need to give it ascending false. See, it says ascending true by default. Okay, so we're just going to do this. We're going to say sh2 sort values percentage of pop false head five all right And there you have it. Now, let's quickly finish this up. So, you might not want to see all this other stuff. You might want to just pick... Um, you might just want to pick the title out of this, right? And then display that. And the year. So, I can add that in here. I could say... Just give me the year... the title, the comic book, and the percentage of the population. And I got to get rid of that dot there. And then the dot goes over here. So you can chain these together, right? This, no oh, mic there. This is a data frame. And then this, is a data frame and then this gives you the head of that data frame so you can chain them all together there you go so that's the top five i'm just showing the year and the title and the comic book and the percentage of population now let's just finish this up with how do you turn this into a full-fledged program right well you might have a program that lets you input i don't know it all depends on what your scenario is but you might have a program that lets you input um you know marvel or DC and then it filters on Marvel or DC and then just shows you the top five Marvel or DC movies so it would look something like this you'd say um, comic input now if you're gonna do the whole thing I'm gonna do some copying and pasting hold on okay so what I've done was I've grabbed all my imports then I'm loading the data file then I'm dropping the NA, 
Then I'm adding my column. So I took all that work that I did up there where I was figuring it all out. And I'm going to turn it into a working program. I'm going to ask you, what do you want to look at, DC or Marvel? I'm going to ask you how many. Then I'm going to use that to do this. I'm going to say out. I'm just going to call it output. And then I'm going to grab this. And what I need to add in here is a filter. So I'm, those are my columns, right? And then I want to filter here on SH2 comic is equal to whatever you typed in for comic. So I'm going to filter that on that comic. And then I'm not going to show head five. I'm going to show head number. And then down here, I'm going to say display output like that. And output is just another data frame. DC or Marvel, DC, give me the top three. There you go. Run it again. Marvel, top 10. There's the top 10 Marvel movies. There you go. There you have it. So that's how you would make a, a program that used the data frame. This is very useful because you're going to probably need something like this in your projects. Now, I could also make a, a loop out of this. I could say, you know, while true, um, or quit. And then I can add, you know, if comic quit break. Okay, now I have this in a loop. Um, DC, give me the top five. And now it asks me again. Marvel, give me the top three. And then I can type in quit. So there you go. So you can even write it as a loop. You need the display here, though, because you want to put more than one data frame in the output. So you need to use that, that IPython display. Okay, let's keep moving on. It should be noted before I do the end end example that there are there are th two other watch me codes three and four and I encourage you to go through them I, I they're very well commented so that you can get an a, understanding of what's happening here this is going to be a great way for you to really start to master pandas is to sort of fool around with these other examples that I've I've given you um, and let's move on and do this one of the iSchool school classes so what we want to do is we want to show those Friday 8 a.m. classes that you don't want to take. Here's that iSchool class schedule right here. What I want to do is I want to read this into Pandas and do an analysis on it so I can find those Friday, Friday 8 a.m. classes. So here's a Friday class, right? Here's a Friday class, um, but I don't see any 8 a.m. classes. So again, I want to find Friday classes, undergrad classes, 8 a.m. classes and I just want to list those out. That's what I care about. So this is a great example of how to read a table in with pandas and then also continue with the data manipulations that we already know. And we'll do a, a little bit of feature engineering in the process. Okay, let's get the example going. So here's my URL. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go back to my pandas page. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm not gonna use read CSV There's a read HTML. And the way the read HTML works is you give it um, a, a URL, which is a web page, and it will find the tables of data on the web page and turn them into pandas data frames for you. Now, the challenge with this is when you get something back, it's not a handy dandy data frame, it's a list of every single possible data frame that's on that page. Some web pages you go to might have three or four tables of data on them. So pandas will grab all of those. We're lucky because this one only has one that we want. So if I take the first item in the list, that will be the data frame that I want. And there, there it is. And you can see there's a lot of data in here. So what Pandas does is try to not show it all to me. There's 243 rows of data, 244 rows of data. It doesn't show me all of them. Okay. Does that make sense? Read HTML will find all the tables on the web page, return them as a list of data frames, and then 
in this particular case, I got lucky. There's only one list on here. So I'm going to just grab that one. There are other situations where there might be multiple lists. And um, in that case, you'll have to figure out which one is the, is, the, is, the li is the data frame that you want. But this is the one that I want. So I'm just going to say um, all, all tables like that. And then I'm going to say classes equals all tables bracket zero. OK, so how do we find the ones on a Friday? Well, you can see there's a day column, right? So I can say classes, you know, I'm going to call this Friday classes. Day uh, does not equal a Friday, right? And then let's just take a look at Friday classes. Okay. Oh, I, I want um, equals Friday, not not equals Friday, bonehead. There. Friday, 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 Friday. Now, what this does not include are classes like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Are there any of those in here? Let's see. Control F. And let's search for fry, just the word F. And this, this is, oh, there's one. So it's not including that one in that list. That one's also on Friday. See that? It only, because we're asking for exactly Friday. So the question is, is this data column is a string, right? So how do we use the string functions on this column? This is a trick. So this is a pandas data frame column. And if I say stir, I can access the string functions. So I can say string. And then I can say find. Now, if you don't remember how string find works, let's just come down here and try it. Monday, Wednesday, Friday dot find the F. See that it's in position two. But if I say um, if I say Tuesday, Thursday. And then I say find the F, I get position minus one. So if the position is zero or more, it found it. That's how find works, if you don't remember. So now that I know that, I can say classes day, access to string functions. Let's use find the F. And that find the F is bigger than or equal to zero. Then I know I found the F. There we go. There we go. That one's every day of the week. That one's every day of the week. That one's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So there you go. I have it now. Good. So that's step one is those Friday classes. Boom. Got them. Now, some of these classes um, are considered to be online classes. And those online classes if i can i think these are all campus classes no, they wouldn't be because they're, they have a day so let's do this then some of these classes are grad classes right and i, I want to avoid uh the grad classes i also want to avoid these um ids classes i'm not going to take those right so how can we filter those out well um we can use starts with right as a string function right so I only want the IST classes. So then I can say um, Friday IST only is classes, classes, course, stir, starts with, IST. I only want the IST classes out of here. Let me add that to my list of fun things to do. And let me put that here and see what we get. Okay, so we'll run this. There we go. So Friday, IST only, all the IDS ones went away. So now what I got to do is get rid... <laughs> oh, you can see the ones that are NAN are still showing up. 
right? So we'll have to figure that out too. Let's do this first. Let's get rid of all the grad classes. So the grad classes have the last three digits are bigger than 500. So this will involve some column engineering. So let's do this. Let's take those classes. Let's say classes number. And let's make that number equal to classes course stir. And then I'm going to slice that string, right? Zero, one, two. Three, four, after two, right? Zero, one, two, it's three and on. So three and on. Right? And I want that to be an int. But let's see what we get here. Let's try this. So I got number 101. See that one night? How did I do this so quickly? Again, this is a string. And I know I, with strings, I can slice them, right? So see, this is the thing. Don't forget everything you already learned in the class. It's still useful even with pandas. So I just want to grab that, 101. So now I want to try to use this and say I don't want, I want numbers less than 500, right? So let's just try this down here. See what that gives us. Okay, so now I get this thing that says less than not supported between instances of stir and int. Okay, because, see I got, as far as I could, and then now I finally hit some kind of error. Let me just show you this here. This is not a number, it's a string. And so I cannot compare that. I could do this, right? And this is probably going to work, right? And give me what I want. And it still compares, right? Because it's it's um, not a number, it's a string. I could also convert this to a number, but I, I don't need to do that in this case. This will just compare just fine as a string. Okay, so now I got that. I'm gonna put that up here. So this is Friday. This is Friday. Ugh. IST U grad. Okay, let's see what we got now. There we go. There's still a lot of them, and there's a re the reason there's a lot of them is because now you see that, um, why is this one showing up? Tuesday, Thursday. Okay, let's just check and see what I did wrong here. So I have classes find f and then here i'm still using classes i should be using friday classes see i'm not applying my my stacked filters i need friday classes here so friday classes start with a friday then i take friday classes and start with ist then i take friday undergrad and it's friday ist only so i, I didn't have friday classes in there so let's see if this makes more sense And there they are. Now, none of these classes um, are at 8 a.m. But there are some classes that are early in the morning. So uh, you you see that. There's a 9.30, and there's a 1.50, and there's a 2.55, right? Okay. But um, this is pretty, this is a small enough list where you could go through this and say, all right, which of these classes uh, do I not want to take? Okay. So now that we've figured all this out, let's turn this into a data product, right? Let's take what we've learned from our data analysis and write a program around it, okay? And let's figure out what kind of program we want to write, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just repeat this like it's a full program. I'm going to grab this like that, okay? And then I'm going to grab my classes in my column engineering like that. Okay. And then let's play a game where we get to choose whether or not we're a grad or an undergrad student. Okay. And then that will affect this. 
and then we um, choose which day we do not want to take classes on and that will affect this okay so some of these things are gonna have to change I can't call them Friday classes anymore right I have to come up with more generic names for these things so here's how you sort of generalize this now that you've gone through the specific and you want to try to sort of generalize it right so at some point in here I need to say you know um, day to avoid and then input enter day to avoid and then I should probably give them an idea of what those look like so Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday and then I can also say show grad I'll just call it show what do you want to see grad or you grad okay I'm gonna move these I don't want them here because I'm gonna always do this right and I'm always gonna do that I'm always gonna get to the point where I have classes so then I'm gonna ask for input like this so now I need to think about how to redo these filters okay they're always IST classes by the way so I guess I could put that up here too let me take care of that first IST classes and this is going to be classes I probably should make sure that all this works but if there's an error there's an error who cares all right so there's my inputs and then now we got to figure out what to do about this so maybe I'll take this one and do it first I, I'm really not thinking this through very well I should have really thought of an algorithm first this is what happens when you don't think of an algorithm first you get into this you don't know what you want right you should always try to figure out and plan what you want so it makes sense to ask what 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 classes do you want to see right grad or undergrad right so if show grad then what am I gonna do I'm gonna say filtered how do I do grad only grad only would be IST classes else let's just assume that it's undergrad okay so that deals with grad undergrad if you type in grad then it's going to show classes bigger than 500 if you type in anything else it'll just show less than 500 it's not perfect but it's good enough for right now I, I could use LF here and then I can say LF show you grad when you do this you need to think about what are you gonna do in the else case maybe I show both so in, in the else case I'm just gonna say filtered is IST classes I'm just gonna use IST classes again okay now my next manipulation is going to use filtered so the next manipulation is this one I did this manipulation the next man manipulation um, shows classes on that day so it's gonna say I'm gonna call it day filter is going to be class is gonna be filtered I got to use this guy here because that applies my first filter day stir find now I'm not gonna find the F I'm gonna find day to avoid right there day to avoid uh, bigger than or equal to zero 
And then the last thing I'm going to do is display day filter. We're going to clean this up a bit in our last few minutes if it works. Oh, I got a mistake somewhere. Line 17. Better turn line numbers on. Oh. Looks good. What classes do you want to see? Grad. Energy to avoid Monday. Okay, got an error. Name filter does not define. Okay, looks like I can't spell. Filter red, red, red. There we go. Okay, now they're all spelled the same way, whether it's right or wrong. Grad Monday. Okay, those are the classes I should avoid. These are grad classes on Monday. It looks like I'm avoiding a lot of classes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's run it again. You grad Wednesday. All right, those are the classes I should be avoiding because they're on a Wednesday. Okay, I could make a loop out of this, right? Um, maybe I should show you in a, in a little bit of time how do you deal with this, right? I want to make sure that this is is valid, right? So here's a trick that you can use. I'm just going to do a break, right? I mean, there's there are a lot of ways you can handle this, but the best way to handle this is with a list like this. Watch. You can do something like this. You can say. days and then I make a list like this the advantage of doing this as well is that you can you have one place to present everything like as follows rather than enter day to avoid like this I can say days and make an F string out of it okay and then I run it grad and then see there's my list of days so i can say uh, sunday let's do now nah, let's do tuesday tuesday okay, and those are the classes on uh, on a tuesday okay so you can see you could write this probably a lot of different ways there's a lot of different uh, ways you can approach this program maybe the program instead should be you know type in the title of the course you're looking for or what kind of keyword are you looking in the course? Like I'm looking for a course in database and you type that in, it shows you all the courses with database in them or financial or um, organization. And you can find uh, the courses that way. So there's lots of different ways you can sort of take this program. And that's what I encourage you to think about as you're thinking through your projects is you might choose rather than using an API, but to find some data set that's out there that you can that you can use in Python to do something really interesting. And there's a lot of great data sets out there. If you just kind of search um, the web for you know public data sets or available data sets, you'll see there's a lot of different things that you can start with to sort of you know sort of guide you and figure out what you might want to do as a, as an interesting kind of program. Um, don't limit it to just using APIs. There's lots of other ways that you can um, make your program interesting, um, not only with APIs, but with data or with maybe with both. All right. So let's conclude with an activity, a one question quiz. This is another, you know, you're going to see this on the, on the final test. So I've got this data frame here, you know, A, B, C in the columns, one, three, five is under A, um, XWQ is under B, YYZ is under C. So what is this? DF, and then let's filter column C where it's Z, and then retrieve A. What's the answer? I'll give you a second to think about it. Pause the video. All right, DFC equals Z. Okay, C, that's only this row here. And then we're retrieving value from column A, which is the five. So the answer should be C5. That's basically how these column and row selectors work in Pandas. Okay, that's it for Pandas. You, I think you'll find that this week's lab is very interesting, as is also the 
Um, now you code zero that you will do in your recitations. Have a good week, and uh, we'll see you again real soon. Thank you.